Jesus. Leave it. We're not in any hurry. Jesus, my God. Mm, hallelujah. Oh, how we long for oh, your embrace. Thank you, Jesus. We wait, we wait, hallelujah, yes, good morning, good morning, welcome, 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 as you join, welcome, good morning, hallelujah, and as we feel this house, we feel this house, with your presence. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Somebody worship him. We we'll wait. Let us wait on the Lord. My God. Hallelujah. Jesus. My God. Jesus. Hallelujah. Mm. Let us wait on the Lord. Let us wait on the Lord. Hallelujah. We'll wait on the Lord. We'll wait on the Lord. We will wait, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. I will wait. Somebody said, I will learn to wait. We will wait. We wait. We're going to worship the Lord and wait. There is a need to wait. It's necessary to wait. Somebody go ahead and begin to share. It's important to wait on the Lord. Hallelujah. Go ahead and begin to share the broadcast, people of God. It's important. It's equally important to wait on the Lord. When you don't wait on the Lord, you you have too much regrets. People of God, sin is sweet. Sin is very sweet. And as we fill this house, we fill it with your presence. Open your mouth and tell God you'll wait. Open your mouth and tell God that you will wait your turn. Tell daddy that you will wait. Now you know that when you don't wait, you get into trouble with God. Now you know when you don't wait, you also get into trouble with man and the devil. We have to wait on the Lord. It doesn't matter what our situation looks like. We have to wait. There is a waiting period. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. There is a waiting period involved in your breakthrough. There is a waiting period involved in your healing. 
There is a waiting period involved, my God, with your marriage. There is a waiting period involved with your ministry. There is a waiting period involved with your children's breakthrough. There is a waiting period involved when it comes down to your success. When it comes down to your healing, there is a waiting period involved. Jesus, don't rush. Don't rush. I came to tell you this morning, don't rush. Don't rush. Wait on the Lord. And be of good courage. You will never live in regret when you wait on the Lord. I will learn to wait. Somebody said we will wait. We are not in any hurry. We will wait. Jesus, help us to wait, Lord. Teach us how to wait, Jesus. Somebody said, Lord, I will wait. Somebody said, Lord, I will wait. Because I believe that all things are possible. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. People of God, I came this morning to encourage you. Just remember to wait. Things might not look like what you think it should have been. But just wait. There's a reason. God is working it out for your good. It might not sound like what you expect it to sound like. Pay attention to the fine print. Wait on the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Wait on the Lord. Learn to wait. Wait on the Lord. It will increase your spiritual life when you wait on the Lord. It will increase your prayer life. It will increase your faith when you wait because you know that he will come true. You know he will come true for you. Wait. Just wait. Meekly wait and murmur not. Wait on the Lord. Don't rush into anything that you will live to regret. Hallelujah. Wait. Not everything that looks good is good. Wait. Not everybody that smile at you really care for you. Wait. Some of them, they want to take advantage and disadvantage of you. They want to use you to their advantage, their full advantage. But when you wait on the Lord, he will do it his way. God knows what you need. Wait on the Lord. Even if you are laying in a place that is not yours, wait till God open that door for you. Don't just jump and move because somebody said move. Wait on the Lord. Wait your turn. God has not forgotten you. I came this morning to tell you, he has not forgotten you. He has not forgotten you. He has seen your tears. He heard your cry. He heard your prayer. God has not forgotten you. I came to tell someone this hour, wait on the Lord. Go ahead and begin to share this broadcast. Wait on him. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. He will strengthen your heart. Wait on the Lord. He's got it all in store for you. Wait your turn. Yes, I know you have been waiting for a while. He's keeping you while you wait. He's taking care of you while you wait. Don't rush into anything. Don't rush into marriage. Don't rush because that job offer sounds good. It might be the end of your career. Don't rush into anything because you didn't have money to buy food. Anybody remember what happened between Jacob and Esau? Esau make a decision because he was hungry. He make a decision because he didn't have anything to eat. Don't rush into something because you're hungry and broke. 
Don't accept an offer big based on your current situation. Wait on the Lord. It doesn't matter what it looks like. Wait on the Lord. Don't jump because you get that first offer and you were hungry and you were broke and you were broken and you were naked. Wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. Wait your turn. God has not forgotten you. Somebody go ahead and begin to share this word. Somebody say you are speaking to me, woman of God. Hallelujah. Wait your turn. Don't just take an offer because, my God, you're hungry. Don't take an offer because you're homeless. Don't take it up because you're naked. Don't take that offer. Wait on your destiny helper. Somebody say, oh Lord, send my destiny helper. Send my destiny helper. Lord, I'm tired of making the bad decisions. I'm not good at making decisions, Lord. Send my destiny helper. Hear my cry, oh God. Send my destiny helper. Send my destiny helper, Lord. I'm tired of making poor choices. I'm tired of making all these mistakes. Lord, I know you show me that you have great things in store for me. But the things that are happening now is because of the decisions that I make. Send my destiny helper, oh God. I'm waiting on you, Jesus. I'm waiting on you, Lord. There was a man who took his family to a place a dry place because he heard there was bread over there he didn't do his research he just picked up his wife and his children and he took them over to moab and he died because the thing was spiritual his sons died he left his wife a widow because of greed people of god let me tell you something be careful who you sleep with be careful who you're married to. Be careful who you accept in your circle. Some people will lead you to your early grave because of money and food. The man told his family that he heard that there is bread over in Moab. And he was going over there and because he was the head of the family. I don't know who the Lord is using me to talk to this morning. But I came to tell a wait. Wait on the Lord. Don't jump because you heard that they have a job over there and you can work. It might be a setup to destroy your career. Hallelujah. Don't jump because you heard that there is some things over there. Wait on the Lord. Seek the face of God to know if this is a move that he wants you to make. My God, wait, sit down and wait. You have been waiting long enough, wait. The Bible says, wait, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Your strength will be renewed at the right time. Stop being impatient with God. Stop being impatient with God, wait. I don't know who the Lord is talking to this morning, but my spirit is angry. My spirit man is angry. Don't take a job offer because you don't have a dollar. And said, remember, I didn't have anything. God will provide. He has been providing for, listen to me, from the day you came to earth. Look at the birds. They are homeless, but God provides for them. In this side of town where I live, we get snow at the end of the year into the first three months of the, 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 the new year, we get snow. And those birds, God provide for them. The ants on the ground, God provide for them during winter, during dry season. Don't let your dry season talk to you. I came this morning just to encourage some people. Don't let your dry season talk to you. Don't let your nakedness talk to you. 
Don't let sin, hallelujah, talk to you. Don't let your current situation define you. Tell somebody, where I am today is not where I, I'll be tomorrow. My God, my beginning does not define my end. Tell somebody, wait on the Lord. He will do it for you. Stop complaining. Stop crying. Stop begging. The Lord has it all in store for you. Wait. He said, wait. There are so many different places in the Bible that the Bible reminds us to wait on the Lord. Some people got into trouble because they never waited. You jump into a relationship and then when the right person show up, you're embarrassed. Because it took a while to get out of that marriage. It will take, marriage is painful when you're married to the wrong person. It's painful. Everything is a problem. And these things happen when we don't wait on the Lord. These things happen when we get into the, into the bed with the wrong person. Because we didn't wait. We said God is taking too long. But the, but the waiting process was to mold you. The waiting process was to help you to grow. The waiting process was to help you to build your self-esteem. The waiting, yes. The waiting process was to build your self-esteem. The waiting process was for you to get into an intimate relationship with God. So while you're waiting, you didn't sit and fold your hands. You're doing something. You're preparing for this time that's ahead of you. Wait on the Lord. Wait your turn. Yes, your family members got married. Yes, they're happy. Yes, you know somebody who could be a good fit for that position. But did God say that? Did God give you the green light? Did God say go? Did you consult God before you said yes? Did you pray over it? Did you fast over it? Hallelujah. Did you work it out in prayer with God? Did God say yes finally? Did God send someone to confirm it to you? Because if God never confirm it, you're going to be in problems in that marriage. When you're married to the wrong person, you will never be happy because everything will go wrong because it's Mr. Wrong or Mrs. Wrong. Because there was a time when that was Miss Right Now or Mr. Right Now. But that don't mean because the person is right now, it's that, that's what God is saying. That don't mean because it's right now, it means it's, it's right. Hallelujah. Jesus. Did God give you the green light to take that job? Did God give you the green light to move into that house? Sometimes we do some things because it looks good. And it so the offer sounds good. But did you consult God? I need a job so bad. And the other day I was telling God I need a job. And somebody called me with a job offer. And I never pray about it. Because I know I've been praying and I said I'll take it. And after I got off the phone, the Holy Spirit began to minister to me. He said, why did you say yes? Did you ask me about this particular one? And I began to repent. And then before the week was out, I received a phone call that the job was no longer available. Wait, people of God. Yes, I need the money. So I'm looking for a job. But God has to give me the one that he know that won't destroy my spiritual life. Many of us, we take some position and it destroy our patience because God didn't give us the job. So we begin to, yes, we become unfaithful. We lose patience. Our prayer life been destroyed because God never give us the get go. He didn't give us the green light. He didn't give us the go ahead. So we mess up because we took a position with some people that doesn't even worship God anymore. You heard they say they love God, but they don't worship God. I don't know who the Lord sent me here to talk to, but I came to tell you, good morning. We are praying for God to release our destiny helper. Because when our destiny helper come, nothing, no powers can stop your destiny helper. Your destiny helper will not die. 
The man picked up his family and took them to Moab. And he died. His children died. Left his wife. And his daughter-in-laws, a widow. Left it. You see, sometimes we allow some people to make some decisions for us because they act like they got it all up here. So we don't even pray about it because they, we said, no, you, you're good at making decisions. I'm leaving it to you. And before you know it, you're in debt. You're in trouble. You, you, you don't have anything because you gave the wrong position. You gave the wrong person that position. And this person is leading you to the, your early grave. That's all that happens when, when you make this kind of mistake in life. Only God can fix it. Only God can fix it. But in the midst of life, there is death. I don't know who the Lord is using me to talk to. But I came out here this morning with my spirit angry. Because somebody needs to get out of a situation. And the Lord is saying, your destiny helper is on, its, on, on their way. And no one will be able to kill. Your destiny helper won't die. No one can kill your destiny helper. You see, Naomi was famous in the family. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Jesus. The Bible didn't call the man's name because he was nobody. In the book of Ruth, chapter 1, people of God, in the book of Ruth, chapter 1 it says in the days when the judges rule in israel a severe famine came upon the land so a man from bethlehem left his home and went to live in a country of moab taking his wife he did not do any research he didn't have a name He did not have a name. Whenever the Bible does not mention a name, that person is a nobody. If you read the Bible carefully, there are names in the Bible. But certain names will not be mentioned because it's irrelevant. My God. I'm saying it. It's irrelevant. The Bible reminds us that he took his family over there because he heard that there was bread. You see, food, food and money, Jesus. I don't know who the Lord is using me to talk to right now, but food and money cause some people to live in hell. It's true. It's true. It is true. Money and food can cause people to go to their early grave. I don't know who the Lord is talking to this morning. Jesus. In the in King James Version, I'm looking because I want to make sure we got it together. It says, a certain man of Bethlehem, Judea, Judah, went to sojourn in the country of Moab. He and his wife and two sons. It was a certain man. He had a name. But in the beginning, the Bible described him as a certain man. The Bible never mentioned his name in the beginning. Because it was not relevant. He had a name. The man have a name. But because of the foolishness that he did, his name was not relevant. The book is called Root. It was all about Root. Ruth was from Moab, living Moab, living in sin. That's what Moab represents, sin and disgrace, curses, fornication, adultery. Some people say adultery. Yes. Everything that was wrong. The man have a name. But in the beginning, look whose name is mentioned in the book, Root, the book, the name of the book is Root. Root is the most relevant person, but Root needed a destiny helper. 
the man was not Ruth destiny helper. His wife, Naomi. The man have a name, people of God. I don't know who the Lord is using me to talk to this morning. But there are some people that we give some position that cannot handle it. If you really want to kill somebody, give them a position that they don't have any knowledge of. It will take them to their early grave. If you really want to be wicked to someone, give them a job that they don't have no training, no knowledge, no experience of. It will drive them crazy. So this man, this clown, he pack up his family. And he have a name. I'm going to call his name. He pack up his family and took them into a dirty place. So it, guess what? He died. He died. Let me tell you something, people of God. Be careful of these people that jump to make decision and don't pray over it. Be careful of these people that are able to jump up and make decision without taking it to the Lord first. Said, honey, let us pray about this thing. I receive an offer. Let us bring it to the Lord in prayer and hear what God has to say. I'm not going to jump. I'm bringing it to you so we can talk to God. But no, no, he didn't do that. Be careful who you, who, whose hands you place your future in. My God, be careful whose hands you place. Remember people of God, I caught myself saying this two days ago. A man is the head of the home. And when a woman married to a man, or a man married to a woman, the woman's future is in that man's hand. I don't know if anybody get this revelation. But when you're married, it doesn't matter the status of the person. You place your future. You place all your hard earnings, your whole life in that man's hand. As the woman. Even if he don't know nothing about marriage. Even if he don't know anything about money management. Even if he don't know anything about what is, up, what is ahead of him. You place your whole life in his hands. Your future. Your children's destiny. My God. I don't know who I'm talking to. This is why we have to pray before we make such moves. People of God, it's time for us to cry out and ask God to release our destiny helper. Let us ask God to release our destiny helper. Sometimes you're married and the person you're married to is not the destiny helper. No. No. You might have money in the bank, money all around in your house, but you need your destiny helper. Money is not blessings, people of God. If you think money is blessings, look what happened to these people. They pack up. They left, they left Israel and move over into Moab. They move over into sin. They move over into disgrace. They move over into poverty. They move over into debt, premature debt. Be careful of that move that you want to make without consulting God. Some of us, we get so desperate because we're tired of sleeping alone. And we choose a man. We never allow God to bring a man. And the man come. Because we choose him. And when the man cannot fit the criteria. He cannot measure up. We, we fight with the man. Ah oh, Jesus. And it goes for women. When the woman cannot measure up. We fight. Your family fight with, you, with the woman. You didn't wait on the Lord. So the devil presents something to you and you didn't ask God because the thing looked good. Some of us, because of looks, we get into trouble again. Not everything that looks good is good. It looks good on the outside and inside is rotten. Hallelujah. I don't know who I'm talking to, but some things look good outside. Some men cute and just nice and, and they, 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 look, they look the part, but they don't fit the part. Some women look nice and everything, but they don't fit the part. Because inside is not good, the character is not good. 
my God. And here we are fighting with the person to give us something that they don't have because we mess up. Because we mess up. People of God, your destiny helper will never die. Your destiny helper will never die prematurely. Somebody said, oh God, send my destiny helper. The man brought his family. Jesus. You see, when people don't do research, some people don't like to read, even when they can read. They don't care. They see the house and it's big and it's beautiful. They want to go inside. They didn't check out the area before they checked that house. Not everything that's cute is cute on the inside. Some people, they look good on the outside, but inside they are empty. You can't even have a good conversation with them without, without it turned into a fight. We have to put God first in all we do. Whatever we're looking for, it's in the hands of God. A lot of us Christian men and women, we make this great mistake. Some of us, we do things because of history. Not because somebody know about your past. That don't mean that God want them in your future. Hallelujah. Not because somebody know about you when you were hungry. That don't mean God want them to be there with you when he give you that steak or that lobster. You need your destiny helper. Some people will only come back to your life because they want something from you. Because they tell themselves, oh, I spent some money on you. Now it's your time to spend on me. Or you owe me. Some people do things and they think you owe them. I'm saying this thing because I remember when Halle Berry make it, the guy that she was messing around with, he asked her back for everything. And it was in the news. The man bought her a car and he gave her cash. Yes, years ago. He told her it was a loan. Mm -hmm. Ali Berry. So you see people come back to haunt you. That was not from God in the beginning. But because of our situation, our circumstances, allow us to, 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 to subject ourselves to some foolishness. Our circumstances will make us subject and be submissive to the wrong people. Our circumstances will destroy our career. Our current situation can destroy our character. Jesus, it will make, allow us to make some poor decisions for the wrong people to entertain them. And that's how they will destroy us. Somebody say, oh God, strengthen me. You see, I only read verse 1 of the book of Ruth. It says, a certain man. His name is there. But it was not, it's not relevant anymore because the first thing he did, he took his wife and children to a place to get hurt. He lost his life. He made poor decisions. You see why some people's name will never be mentioned in the beginning of a story. And if you notice the way Jesus relate to people. When he's talking about certain things, he will say a certain lawyer, a certain man, a certain woman. This is how Jesus presents people to you when he's talking, if you read the Bible clearly. When Jesus was doing his little illustrations, he will talk about a certain individual without even mentioning their name. Because it was not relevant. Because the damage is already done. The moment you make certain move in your life, the damage is done. Only God can take you out of it alive. Somebody say, oh God, help me out of any situation that is not favorable to, to me. Help me out of any situation that will never glorify you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The man 
people of God, this is a story that it, it, it destroy a woman's thought process and thinking. How could she allow this man to do this to her and the children? Without even praying about it? No. She wanted her name to be changed when she went back home. The wife of the man turned out to be somebody's destiny helper. Why? Because she went in with her family and she left alone. She came back from Moab with Ruth. So I'm not even going to mention his name. His name is Emilek, but his name is not relevant because he got killed. However, if he got sick and died, he died. And his boys died. So I guess he went to a place that destroys men. There are some places that you go that have certain spirit that destroy marriage. Be careful. Some places are fruitful. When Joshua sent, send, um, what's his name, Caleb, to go and spy out the land, Caleb said, the place is rich, fruitful. But there are some strong men over there. But first, the, the good news is the place is fruitful. People of God, some places are cursed. When God brought the flood to destroy the earth in the days of Noah, after the flood, God said, I will never do this thing anymore. I will not curse the land anymore. Some land in the book of Chronicles, it tells us, people of God, some lands are cursed. Some places are cursed. God want to heal some land. But the people that live there refuse to stop being wicked. If my people that are called by my name should humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways. God want to heal the land. Some places are cursed. That's why God is saying, I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. Be careful of the place that you choose to live. Be careful of the, of the place that you allow the man to choose. Women, tell the man, let's pray before we move. Men, tell the woman, let us pray before we go there. Some places are cursed. Some of us, we want to go there because our friends are there. Our family members are there. Sometimes God allows some money to come to your hands and you want to go there because rich people over there. But is the place blessed? Did you do, did you check out the demographics before you even think about moving? Did you go and research the history of the place? People of God, wise up, wise up, wise up, wake up. Your destiny helper will never die before their time. D listen to me. The woman and her children and her husband went to Moab. Guess what? Her children died and the husband died because he was the one who took the family there. Now the woman became bitter. And she was trying to leave. I'm going to jump right into verse what? 11. Let, let, let me go to verse 8. The Bible said, but on the way, Naomi said to her, to, Naomi wanted to leave because no, I don't have nothing here. We heard bread was here and I'm here. My husband died, my children died. I'm leaving. But remember, her sons got married to two Moabite women. One was called Oprah and the other one was called Ruth. We are in the book of Ruth. The story is about Ruth. It's not about Naomi's husband nor Naomi's sons. They become a non-factor because they died. The husband become a non-factor the moment he moved his family out. Jesus. 
Yes. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah. So you see, now she has to go. There's nothing there to keep her. There's nothing in that country to keep her. Money run out. Food run out. Everything done. The spirit that destroyed marriage destroyed Nehomi's marriage and her son's marriage. Hey, did, is anybody getting the revelation of what I'm saying here? I'm into the book of Ruth. We're talking about destiny helper. In the midst of, listen to me, in the midst of life, death come. This is why we have to put everything we do before God. Every one of us make mistakes on this earth. We all are guilty. Yes. People of God. Bible said. Then. All right, I'm going to do verse 3. Then Emilet died. And Naomi was left with her two sons. The two sons married more by women. Oprah and Ruth. But 10 years later, they died. It's spiritual. They died. Some things, let me share something with you people of God. We question some things, but it's spiritual. Naomi, Naomi married this man and gave him two sons. And the man just leave town because Famine came. He didn't want. You see, some people don't want to wait on the Lord. Famine came. And he seek and search and find a place where they have bread. He could have left. Sometimes we are going through a dry season. It's not to kill us. It's the season is not unto death. But some of us, we don't want to feel any pressure. We want anointing, but we don't want to fast and pray. We want the anointing, I'm saying it. We want to be around those people who have that powerful anointing. And then we begin to act like them. We don't want to fast and pray. We just want to be in their circle to enjoy and reap the benefit that comes with the anointing. But the Bible said, a man's gift make room for him among great men. Some people, they do so much research on some pastors and some leaders. All they want to do is hang out with pastors and leaders. They're opportunists. This man didn't want to wait for the dry season to over. So he packed up his family and didn't care where he was taking them. Jesus. I, I don't understand if anybody get the revelation here today. God is saying, wait. He moved the people them all the way out there. Hallelujah. And then they, he died. Left his wife in misery. Now the boys died 10 years after the daddy. And there is no reason, there is no known cause of their death. So it's spiritual. Listen. Then Naomi heard. In Moab that the Lord bless his people in Judah so you see the, 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 the famine was only for a time so Naomi heard that everything is okay in Judah so Naomi set herself in position to hear what's going on back home some of us we need to go back home some of us need to go back home and sit down and do some research yes we need to go back to where God first start in our life. We need to go back to the place, to the drawing board. Some of us, we don't appreciate what we have until when it's all gone. Naomi heard that God bless. You see, I'm going to use the word. Then let, let's see what King James said in verse 6. Then she arose with her daughters-in-law, 
that she might return from the country of Moab. She had heard in the country of Moab that the Lord had visited his people and is giving them bread. You see, some people don't want to wait. But God was saying, okay, so your husband died and your two sons died. I'm going to allow somebody to get to you so you could come back home. And God is saying, come back home. Come back home. Bread is here. You run away with the man because the man didn't have good sense. I'm saying it. Because no man with good sense would take his family and move them out of Israel and go to Moab. Because the story of Moab is not good. Be careful of the place that you choose to move to. Because of money and food. Go because God is there. Don't go there because food is there. Because wherever the spirit of the Lord is, there is a liberty. My God. I don't, I don't know who the Lord is using me to talk to today. Yes. But the Lord is saying, Jesus, go home. Go home. You run away because of something that happened and you're running away from it. It's time for you to go back. You didn't receive your breakthrough. You didn't receive your blessings. My God. You didn't receive anything because you left. You didn't get, no, they didn't bless you. Your marriage is not blessed. And this is why you're going through hell. My God. Yes. Many of us, we pack up and we move because we heard that good things are happening over on the other side. But I came to tell you today the reason why the grass seems greener on the other side is because they have some maintenance man, some gardener, some farmer, some people well trained and prepared to water it. Mind your business. This is the time when people need to take a self-check. Take a self-check. My God. Self-check. Somebody said check, check. Somebody said check, check. Jesus. My God. Jesus. What a word. What a word. What a word. Check, check. Check, check. Self-check. Naomi ready to go home. Naomi was ready to dip out of that place because the spirit of death was strong there. And she can't say it was the women that caused her, her, her husband to die. No. She cannot say that. He made decisions to move there. And he lost his life. Tell somebody, check, check. I'm not going anywhere until God said go. I'm not taking no position that God didn't give me. Hallelujah. I'm not moving until God said move. Jesus. When we pray, we have to listen. So when God speak, we can hear. Because God is still speaking. God is still speaking. Hallelujah. God is still speaking. Welcome. Good morning. Happy Sunday. My spirit is angry because God is releasing some people this morning. So they can do some self-check. God is giving you the vim this morning to do your self-check. Check, check. My God, right now, people of God, Naomi heard that God visit Judah. So now she received the green light to go home. Tell somebody, go home. Get out of Moab. Get out of Moab. It's a city of premature death. Get out of Moab. And then guess what? Naomi heard the good news. She was from Judah. 
Now it's time to leave town. Sometimes we just have to pack up and leave town because the spirit of death is all around. She was old. She don't have anything. The husband caused her to lose everything. Remember when you move to a different country, you pack up everything and leave. But Miss Ruth needed her documents. Miss Ruth needed her papers to leave Moab. So she said to Naomi, you can't leave me today. I'm coming and I'm not looking back. So don't even try to get rid of me. I know I was married to your son. I know your husband died. I know my husband died. But I'm not letting you go without me. Tell somebody, I will not let my destiny help her leave without me. Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. So, Naomi turned to her daughter-in-law and she got ready to leave Moab to return home with her two daughter-in-laws and she get out of the place where she had been living. And they took the road that would lead them back to Judah. So not even money. Not even money she had to pay her way. They were walking. Hallelujah. They were on foot. But on the way, Naomi said to her two daughter-in-law, go back to your mother's homes. Tell somebody, go back home. Go back home. Jesus. Excuse me. Tell somebody, go home. My God. Naomi turned to them and said, go back to your mother's homes. And may the Lord reward you for your kindness to your husbands and to me. Because remember, after her husband died for 10 years, they were right there with Naomi. So they were kind to her. But I know something good happened. Naomi was kind to them as well. Let's read the story. The Bible said, Naomi said, May the Lord bless you with the security of another marriage. So Naomi was speaking into their lives. Hallelujah. Then she kissed them goodbye. And they broke down and wept. No, they said, we want to go with you to your people because there's something special about you when there's something special about you people will want to follow you when you do good good will follow you they were good to her even though it was a bad place they were good to her and she was good to them so this is why they wanted to go with her but hear this but Naomi replied, why should I go? Why should you go with me? Can I still give birth to other sons who can grow up to be your husband? No. My daughters, return to your parents' home, for I am too old to marry again. Oh, God. I Even if I were, it were possible, I would get married tonight and bear sons. Then what? Would you wait for them to grow up and refuse? <laughs> oh, God. No, of course not, my daughters. Things are far more bitter for me than for you. So Naomi was bitter. She became bitter. Because she was old. It was a little bit of chances for her to remarry. When a woman is getting up in age, it's not easy. But a man can get away with it, but not a woman. Unless the woman is blessed and her, her age, she's still aging gracefully. Hallelujah. Some women age gracefully, so their age doesn't show. My God. The Bible said, because the Lord himself has raised his fist against me. So Naomi now thinks this is a curse. Because the man died and the boys died. 
Again, they wept together. Oprah kissed her mother-in-law and said goodbye. Oprah couldn't take it. Oprah wasn't built for Judah. But Ruth, somebody said, but Ruth. But Ruth clung tightly to Naomi. Look, Naomi said to her, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and her gods because they serve false god in Moab and this is what killed her sons in Moab there's a spirit there that destroy marriage sometimes some people come to your life and all your face is destruction yes pain because they want to take you to their people with the land is curse my god but Ruth replied, don't ask me to leave you and turn back. Where Somebody said, wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you live, I will live. Your people will be my people and your God, your big G-O-D, your capital God, not common God, not foreign God. Your, my God, I don't know who I'm talking to this morning. Ruth said, Wherever you go, Nehomi, I'm coming. Wherever you live, I will live there. Jesus, your people will be my people. I am adapting you into my life. I will be with you. I'm not going anywhere. You cannot get rid of me. You are my destiny helper. And I'm not going to let you go without me. Hey, Jesus, you are my destiny helper. And I'm not going to let you go. Wherever you go, I'm coming. Wherever you live, that's where I'm going to live. Your people, I'm going to be their people too. Hey, somebody worship God this morning. Oh Lord, send my destiny helper. Don't wait until somebody dies before you ask God for your helper. It means that her husband was not her destiny helper. I say this all the time, not because you are married. The person that you're married to is your destiny helper. No, not all the time. Not all the time. Ruth needed papers to get out of Moab. She know about the false and the idol worshiping going on in Moab. She don't want to live that life anymore. She got a taste of Jesus. Naomi was down in Moab worshiping God. So Naomi taught Ruth how to pray. Jesus, hey, I feel like preaching. Naomi taught Ruth how to pray. Ruth get a taste of Jesus. I came to talk to somebody here today. I don't know if anybody here have ever had an encounter with Jesus Christ. Because once you have an encounter with him, you will never lie anymore. You will never steal anymore. You will never beg anymore. You will never envy anymore. You will never be jealous anymore. You will learn to wait on the Lord. When you have an encounter, not everybody that is baptized have an encounter. Some people got baptized for the wrong reasons. So they have to wait their turn. My God. Some women married to the wrong man. Some man married to the wrong woman. And all they face is hell. Jesus. Ruth said, your people will be my people. And your God will be my God. Wherever you die. I will die. I'm done. It's over. It's over. Ruth said, wherever you die, I will die. So now you find out her mother-in-law turned out to be her destiny helper. You see, her husband was not the destiny helper. It was the mother-in-law. My God. Oh, Jesus. Have your way this morning. Have your way this morning, Lord God. Have your way this morning. Ruth said, I know you know some people. I know you have connections. I know the way you pray. It make me know that you are the smart one. My God, I don't know why your husband brought you down to Moab, but you're not leaving Moab without me. Bread 
was in Judah. So there was no famine anymore. Wait on the Lord. Wait your turn. Don't just take something because the offer sounds good. Don't just jump into it because it looks good. Wait. I came to talk to some people. It's time to get out of Moab. Tell somebody, I'm coming out of Moab. Jesus. Tell somebody, I'm coming out of Moab. We need to study the word of God and understand. And when we don't understand, we ask God and pray for revelations. The man caused his sons to die and he died. Ten years later, the boys died. But Ruth was determined. Ruth wanted her papers. Ruth knew that the mother-in-law had connections. She get to spend ten good years with Ruth, with, with Naomi. Ruth spent 10 years with Naomi because when her husband died, they had to help her. So she get to see the character of the woman. If I spend 10 years with my mother-in-law and she decide to pack up and go back, and if I decide to go back with her, it's not easy to deal with a mother-in-law, especially a widow. I'm just, I'm just breaking it down for somebody to understand. The woman was a widow. She was bitter. Naomi said, things are far bitter for me. Because the Lord have raised his fist against me. God didn't raise his fist against Naomi. It was the spiritual things, the idol worshiping, all those bad things that goes on in Moab that destroyed her sons and her husband. Jesus. And that's what verse 13. The hand of the Lord is gone out against me. God didn't go against her. God was on her side. And this is why she was going back home. You see, Ruth was determined. Hear what she said. She said, may the Lord punish me severely if I allow anything but death to separate us. That was her destiny helper. She said, may the Lord punish me severely if I allow anything than death. She had love for her destiny helper. Love was in her heart. It means that the woman showed her love in the 10 years after the passing of her husband. I don't know who the Lord is using me to talk to today, but I encourage you. Don't serve any other God. Ruth was from a place where those things, that's all they do there. So God allow Ruth to get her deliverance so she could leave with Naomi. Oprah wanted to leave, but she couldn't take the tears. Naomi said, go back to your family. Sometimes you have to say no to see what a person really wants. Sometimes you have to put some things out there to see where a person's heart is. Some people will pretend like they want to be around you and they really don't. They want you to say something so they can say you told them to leave. So she went back home to the idol worshiping lifestyle. My God. Sister Tara, may the Lord remember you. May your tide speak on your behalf. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth.
Amen. Hallelujah. So today I came to ask you, continue. If you're not, continue to pray for God to send your destiny helper. Don't just make a decision based on your current situation. Your current situation does not define you. Your current situation does not. I will continue this message. My God. Ruth said. May God punish me. Severely. If I allow anything. But death to separate us. Ruth found Jesus. Through Nehomi. And her prayer life. She found Jesus. Have you found Jesus? Because it doesn't mean that because you baptize, you find Jesus. Some people have to go through some things to find Jesus. Hallelujah. Some people have to go through some things, Sister Jackie, to find Jesus. Even though Naomi was bitter. She blamed God. She never blamed her husband for making such an error. That was an error. You can't move to a place because you heard there is food. Sometimes there is no food and God is saying it's time to fast. It's time to go and fast and burn your belly. Wrap a bun around your belly and speak life over your body. Don't let food allow you to move to another place to destroy you. Don't allow, listen to me people of God. Many people you meet at certain jobs, they are there because of the food. Free food. It's true. Jesus himself said, some of those that were following him, they were not following him because of the word. It was because of the free fish and bread. Food. Be careful. Food is very powerful. This is one of the things that the children of Israel throw in Moses' face. They say, Moses, you want us to die from hunger. You don't like us. That's why you take us out of Egypt. God is taking some people out of Egypt, but they are saying, no, the food and that cucumber, that onion, that big fish. I like that melon down there in Egypt. Come on, burn your belly and pray. You go someplace and there is not enough food. Forget about the food. It's time to pray. Seek the face of God. Ten years later, the boys died. Then Naomi heard that there is bread back over there. God has visited. Sometimes some things happen to oh, Jesus. I don't know who I'm talking to, but I came to let you know, don't allow food to destroy your spiritual life. Don't allow food to destroy your family. Don't allow because of a little bit of money. Some man will say, I'm going to take that job over there in that different, that foreign country because it pay more. And by the time he get over there, something happen. Either he end up in another family or he die before his time. Money, food. If you read the book of Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 22, it tells you it is the blessings of the Lord that make it rich and add no sorrow to your life. Not money, blessings. So you see Naomi heard that God blessed Judah. Judah was blessed. So she had to go back to the blessings. Not money, blessings. Some of us, we chase after the money because we are money hungry and we don't understand the things of God. I came this morning to talk to some people. Jesus. My God. Hallelujah. God said wait. Some people don't want to wait. Some men don't want to wait. Some men don't even want to pray before they do they do they they, they, they do an application for a job. <laughs> Excuse me. The reason why some of us are so favored is because of our prayer life. We end up getting jobs that we're not even qualified for. <clears throat> Excuse me. That's how God works. Amen. So my time is up. 
I have to go. I just came to encourage you to be reminded that your destiny helper will come. Wait. <laughs> Somebody said, Pastor, you put a fire on breakfast with Jesus. Amen. People of God, let me share this with you. We need to be realistic. We need to pray before we make moves. We can't just jump up and make moves. We need to put it to God. Fast and pray on it. God might not come to you and say a word to you, but he will give someone else the word to give you the confirmation. Wait on the Lord. Pray before you move. Don't just jump into anything. Don't just move into a house because you heard something good about it. Do your research. Check the place out. Go online. Check the history of that address. Mm. Yes. Whatever the Holy Spirit tells you. That's it. And whatever history tells you, that's it. History never lie. History never lie. My God. Root needed a destiny helper. She needed to get out of Moab. She had to. So later on or tomorrow, I'll come back with the continuation of why she had to behave like that to humble Naomi. She had to tell Naomi about debt. Naomi didn't like the, na the name debt because she already lost three people. So when Ruth used that word to her, it quiet her down. Jesus. We need to wait on the Lord. It doesn't matter. Even if somebody make you feel like you're running out of time. Wait. Come on. What's wrong with you? Wait. My time is up. I have to go. Remember today is October 4th. We are still collecting donations to bless a family with grocery and cash to pay some bills. We're doing it on the 15th of the month. So I encourage you to support the ministry so we can bless people. The Lord is saying this month, two people have to get their breakthrough. It's not a lot because the ministry is small. So share the broadcast so your friends can be able to help us to support the ministry so we can be a blessing. On the 15th of October, we have to release that money. So if it's $10, $20, $50, $100, $500, $1,000, $2,000, $3,000, $4,000, $5,000, $6,000, $7,000, $8,000, $9,000, $10,000, $11,000, $12,000, $13,000, $14,000, $15,000, $16,000, $17,000,